There we go. We are live back for another Thursday night. Think fast. And as always, I don't know why Facebook refuses to show me when we are live, but we are. So we're talking this week about the myth of hateful Christians, the myth of hateful Christians. Why? I'll say right up front. That is our title. We're not saying it's a 100% myth that there are no hateful Christians anywhere. Uh, people who claim the name of Christ and do terrible things in the name of Christ. Um, you know, the Westboro Baptists uh, really made a name for themselves in that. There are those. In general, though, a lot of times what you hear is that, you know, Christians are just, you know, so hateful, just so judgmental, so harsh on the world or, or whatever the case may be. And so we've got a uh, thing that's gone a little bit viral we're going to talk about uh, just briefly to kind of introduce the idea. It's an idea that's been out there for a long time, but let's get into this a little bit. Um, it's Andy Stanley. Uh, preachers, I know, are very familiar with him because he's uh, the pastor of the second biggest mega church in America in Atlanta. His father, Charles Stanley, was also a big name guy. Um He's big time book bestseller guy. I mean, just lots of lots of material out there. A lot Very of churches prominent in the evangelical world. Basically. Yes. And a yeah. lot of it's one of those that like, even if you don't know him, it's a good chance a preacher, an elder, somebody, you know, knows him and is influenced by his work. So this clip that he has go viral. Uh, when you guys want, I've been talking the whole time. And you want you guys want to jump in on this on on why this caught our attention and this idea of hateful Christians. Yeah, I'll, I'll go. And then, Joe, if you want to add to some things that I leave out. So in this about a two minute clip, uh, this Andy Stanley guy, he's, he's preaching and, and he's talking about how the, the gist of it really is that that gay people in, in some ways have more faith than regular Christians because there are gay. He, again, he calls them gay Christians or gay people who want to follow God, who continue to come to church, even though they've been ostracized in a church setting. Uh, even though they haven't been accepted, and yet they still keep coming back wanting to worship their Lord and Savior is the way that he put it. And so he was really kind of chastising, again, his his audience, who really straight people is who he was chastising, um, by saying, look, these gay Christians have more faith than a lot of us, than a lot of you, because what, you know, how many times would you go back to somewhere where you're repeatedly ostracized and you're repeatedly not accepted? You know, how many of us would do that? You know, we wouldn't. But yet these gay Christians continue to come back to church and want to come back to worship God. And, and yet we continue to ostracize them. So again, it was, they really have more faith a, than me. Yeah, they have more did. faith than me. Yeah. That's what he, that's what he said. So it was really kind of, again, a chastising of straight Christians and, and specifically Christians that teach that homosexuality is wrong. Um, and it's just, man, it, it was mind blowing. If you haven't seen the clip, um, Jack, I don't know if you're going to share your screen at some point and kind of show what it looks like. I know you can't play the video, but uh, Joe, anything to add as far as the kind of the content of the video there? No, I, the one thing you said that I thought was hilarious. Um, well, I know first Corinthians six, and I know, what is it? Uh, Leviticus 11. And I know Romans, Romans one, one, Romans yeah. one yep. and, and, and those are interesting discussions, but, and then he goes on like, and eh, he called them, he called them clobbering passages. Yes. Was, was, um, the, was the phrase that he used. The tone, and you could tell, and he throws a little joke in there about the in-laws being unwanted and everything, and ha, 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 ha. Yeah, nobody's really laughing there, guy. I mean, you're you're coming in with, this I don't know how, stuff it's that blasphemy. That's exactly it. I don't know how that's anything other than endorsing homosexuality. And he might say, well, there are people that, and I was doing some, some reading on this recently, there are people that endorse uh, or that say, as long as you're not a practicing homosexual, it's okay. So the name doesn't really matter. If you're a homosexual, if you have passions, well, Paul speaks very clearly against that um, and against having your passions go one way. We are to be transformed in our mind where we no longer desire those things. So we're saying it's okay to have a desire for that as long as we're not acting on the desire, but the work of, of that's the work of the flesh, right? To still have right. those desires. The spirit is to change us. Um but it's very easy to make that distinction because if you're going to bust Andy Stanley on it, all he'd say is, well, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm saying those that identify as gay, but maybe they're not acting on their homosexuality. This that We all know the, the sin of homosexuality, which clearly he doesn't if he's going to throw Romans right. 1 in with a clobbering passage. But they get away with it by saying it's those that aren't practicing. What would you guys say against – what would you say to that? Yeah, I and mean, we don't want to really – zero in on andy stanley that much um yeah. he he gave us this idea because 
he's been trending on Twitter for three days because of this. The guy that posted the video, uh, I think it has 1.2 million views of you know Stanley doing this and and there's a lot of people like us saying this is ridiculous it's heretical this is wrong biblically but you've got a lot of other people progressive Christians and even the LGBTQ community going finally thank goodness somebody's saying it look you know if only all Christians were this way and so number one we're talking about it because it's it's really kind of gotten a lot of attention but number two because there is this overarching idea and, and there's this kind of posture that a lot of Christians have that we need to apologize to the world We've, we've been very judgmental. We've been very mean. And we're sorry. We've made this an uncomfortable place for you. You know, I'm not, again, as I said, there's the Westboro Baptist, but there's even individual cases where people have said mean things, harsh things, uh, called names, you know, use slurs, whatever else. I'm not saying that doesn't happen. By and large, the interactions you've seen, I've known homosexual people. You guys have known homosexual people, trans people, that, you know, uh, people from these communities they're they're not mistreated they're not you know uh, it, it's but on they're the other victims. hand what uh, and so you start pressing okay well, well how did we hurt them how have we done how have we been hateful towards them and you peel back well nobody you know if they walk into the church building nobody called them names nobody refused to sit by them nobody you know got up and like wouldn't shake their hand none of that stuff what is it that the church did it was hateful they said those verses. And again, Stanley called them clobber passages as if, you know, we're hitting them upside the head of it. In fact, I was going to share my screen. Um, let's see. Uh, my screen's a mess because of all this, this comic that's kind of been around for a few years of, you know, the poor rainbow wearing LGBT person being beaten up by preachers with their Bibles, you know, swinging them at his head. Um, this is a concept that a lot of people have that a lot of people think Christianity works like this that we act this way that that and so you say well what did i do to say that well i I said you were wrong i said you're in sin well we say the same thing to the adulterer we say the same thing to the porn addict we say the same thing to you know the the person with an anger problem we say like if the bible says it's a sin we say it's a sin why is that hateful we saw the same thing we, uh, we had we did a live um on the roe v wade thing when it was overturned and how many Christians immediately rushed out to this is going to be really hard on on single mothers and this is not fair to them and Christians, we shouldn't be celebrating this. Again, it's like this hateful thing of saying bad is bad and good is good. That's not hateful. No, I think it's it's very frustrating that you take a stand on anything. Now, if they want to take a stand, if they want to call us hateful, if they want to call us bigots, homophobes, every name in the book which they are known for character assassinations and, you know, the ad hominem arguments, they want to claim that that's us. It's very interesting how much they project their problems onto us. They feel hated, so we must be the ones doing it, right? They, they feel, a lot of times, I think they feel unworthy of love, and they feel that we're the ones telling them they're unworthy of love. They project a lot of issues that they specifically have onto Christians because we're easy to project, project onto because we stand for something. The problem is when you have Andy Stanley claiming the name of Christ and not standing for something, and that gives us all a bad name. When well, you talk about, yeah, when you talk about standing for something, my mind goes to James 4, I guess, what is it, verse 4, where James basically says, look, it's impossible to be a friend of the world and be, and be a friend of God. And I think messages like this People like Andy Stanley, again, we're, you know, we're just using him as an example. They're, they're doing everything that they can to placate both sides, to present a message that is going to appease a lot of Christians and also appease a lot of the world. And again, it, it's kind of that idea of riding the fence, that idea of, of kind of staying in the middle lane and trying to appease as many people as possible. And so much of that is, I think, where Christians have gone wrong because, like you're saying, Joe – Taking a stand means you're going to offend and ostracize a lot of people. It, it, you're, you're, going to, you're going to be offending a lot of people. And so we'd rather swing the other direction and try to, again, kind of stay in the middle and, and ride the fence there. But the point of it is, look, they're, they're calling us harsh and they're calling it, you know, Christians hateful because we're standing up and saying, look, God says this is wrong. The Bible says that this is wrong. And all these issues nowadays are so emotion driven, right? You watch that Andy Stanley clip and it's like, he's, he's so much, he's appealing to people's emotions, not mm -hmm. their logic, not their brain, not their honest study of God's word, but their emotions and their, don't you feel sorry for these people? And isn't this the loving thing to very 
touchy feely type of message, but it's those types of things that are really not to always bring everything back around to young people. That kind of thing is, is attracting a lot of young people, this very emotion driven, the show love, you know, make people feel a certain way. We're losing our young people. And it's a lot of it, I think, is because we're not taking the firm stance in the other direction. Once again, we're trying to placate both sides. Well, this tells you it's driven by Satan because notice in that comic, what are they holding? They're holding Bibles, not Qurans. Who are who are the people that are putting people to death, putting gays to right. death in the parts of the world? That's a good point. I'm sorry. You're not you're not holding the Quran up. You're saying it's the Christians. And in my experience, Christianity, quote unquote, in the loose terms, are some of the most loving toward them, bending over backwards to try to be as as kind and as as generous as possible to them, the Hillsong people and the Carl Lenses and the Andy Stanleys and all of these people that claim the name of Christ that really besmirch the name of Christ, but that are going out to make sure we go out of our way to know how loved they are. And they have the audacity to do this. Satan is behind this. And any LGBTQ person that that does it, they are parroting an argument that comes from the high ups on a certain side um, that it's it's coming all the way down from there. And you say, well, how has how have, has the church, Jack, back to your point, how have we done that? They don't know. It's because they're parroting something that came from way, this is how we're going to take down Christianity. I'm telling you, it's 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 not a, this is not a Christianity problem. This is a Satan going against this problem, because if it was truly standing up for the homosexuals and all of their rights, people would be going nuts about what's going on in either China or going on in uh, the Middle East with with Islam. They don't do that. It's an attack just on us, and the worst thing Christians can do is back down and go, oh, I'm so sorry. We have mistreated you so much and play into that narrative. That's garbage. Well, and it's so frustrating. It's so frustrating that, you know, again, preachers like that and messages like that are trying to paint the word of God in in such an an acceptable and appealing light. It's like read Romans 1. Right read now. Paul's words right. about it and then tell, you know, just, just read it. Don't put any spin on it. Just read what Paul says about it. And you can very clearly see Paul would have very much been labeled hateful in our day. Paul oh, would yeah. have been labeled a lot of other things because he clearly lays out the the debauchery and just the, the, the degradation of, of the way things go. And yet either people aren't reading that, or once again, they're trying to paint it in a very culturally appropriate light nowadays. And that's something that's just incredibly alarming is that, look, this homosexuality is not – and the, the, the fact that we don't need to tolerate it is not like it's one of those biblical subjects that you really have to dig deep and find. Like, man, where is this? And it's really obscure. Right. There's it's a, very obvious. The guy that was the president of the Southern Baptist Convention a few years ago said the Bible whispers about sexual sin, homosexual that's sin. Right. Like, come on, man. But – I, no, you wish just for about to, it because you're not a man. Yeah, not even just to get to the homosexual side of it, but anything the world doesn't like, anything that we say, you know, we, we've had a, a bunch of stuff up against feminism. That one, you know, there's a lot of Christians who are going to amen us on the LGBT stuff, but man, you start talking about feminism and hold on a second. Yeah. And the world wants us to, to accept that. And I mean, there's just, you teach what the Bible says and anything to which you have to bring God's holiness down to make him more palatable to people, don't be afraid of what the people think. Be afraid of what God thinks. I mean, if if you walked into the Apple store and said, I'd like an iPhone and they say it's a thousand dollars or whatever they go for these days, I can't afford them. So I don't, I don't know. I haven't bought one in like five years, thousand <laughs> um, dollars. And you go, wow, uh, that's pretty high. I don't have a thousand dollars. I'm out of here. And you turn to walk to the door and the Apple employee chases you and says, 500, we'll take 500 for it. <laughs> I, I, I don't have $500, 200, 200. We'll give it to you for 200. We will strip away anything that is, is a barrier to you buying this iPhone. What does that tell you about the phone? What does it tell you about the company? What does it tell you about that value? Like, there's, right. there's no value to it, right? That, well, let's you know, pay like, you. Yeah, let's pay I, you to take the phone. <laughs> yeah. Will, 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 you, will you please just take it? Like, it's the same thing. Paul talked about peddling the gospel, you know, those that just were out there selling it. And, and when you do that, Andy Stanley's got a lot of followers for a reason, peddling the gospel when, okay, a lot of people are going to leave if I don't, if I say that what the Bible says. So let me find a way I can say it so they won't leave and I'll keep them. It's like, okay, you kept the people and you kept the praise of man and the adoration of man. What did Jesus tell us about that? You got your reward in full. And so for him, that's the lesson there for Christians. It's, Stop, stop falling for this stuff. Stop uh, parroting and repeating this idea of, you know, we've been real mean to, no, we haven't. We, number one, have not, but we in general have not. A small few have. Yeah, there's things, you know, that we shouldn't be proud of, things where, where things that should be repented of here and there. By and large, 
we're not out there browbeating people. We don't have the courage to even stand up to people, much less browbeat them. It's this thing we talk about all the time. We're so afraid of the ditch that we're not even close to that we're falling in the other one. We're yeah. so afraid of being mean to them that we accept everything they do. Get back in the middle of the road so you're not falling into either ditch. No, don't go to being mean to them all the time. Nobody's saying that, but we're so far removed from that that we are compromisers well, to any, any sin the world wants us to give up on. We go, okay, well, let's figure out a way how. Well, and that's the thing. It's not going to stop with homosexuality and it hasn't stopped. Now it's the transgenderism. Now it's transgenders actively discipling your kids in school with the drag queen story hour thing that we brought up a thousand times. What's it going to be next? You don't think pedophilia yeah. is going to be right down the pike and, and other things like that, that again, it's not just going to be one of those things. Okay. Well just accept this. And then we're going to, you know, we'll be fine with it. no, they're going to keep pushing the envelope until you reach a point where it's like, how did we get here? We talked about this, you know, tolerance, and how it used to be tolerance. Jack, I think you wrote the article on it. it. used to be tolerance, used to be tolerance, tolerance, tolerance. Nobody says tolerance anymore. We move beyond because they don't care about tolerating. They are there to win. We're there to win too. And we can, we can rest. I'm just going to go out for a second, then we can wrap up. We can rest on, well, Christ has already won. I realize that. But there's a spiritual battle still taking place that Paul is talking about in Ephesians 6 after Christ has already been resurrected. We're still in the midst of a battle. Christ has won the war. We understand that. We're in a battle. And Christians who want to bury their head in the sand and act like this isn't a battle for our kids, this isn't a battle for souls right now in the trenches, and they just want to go, well, Christ has already won. We realize that in, in the end. We're still fighting battles on a spiritual ground, losing souls every single day because we don't want to we don't want to get down and say, hold on a second. This is a power struggle between us and the left, us and LGBTQ. We're winning. Well, we are going to win because Christ will reign. This goes to Psalm 2. This goes to a lot of different passages. We are going to reign. This is the Christian nationalism thing of Christ reigns supreme in every way. It's our job as Christians to make sure that comes about. This is the way we do it is by not burying our head in the sand going, well, you know, Christ has already won. So God, just take me home. We live in this earth now. My kids have to deal with the consequences of what I do or do not do about these issues. Let's stand up and stop taking a, you know, stop bowing down to these people. Sorry. I was just going to say, and Jack, you can then you can wrap us up. Paul mm -hmm. Paul didn't tell us to put our put on the armor of God as a little cute example just for fun. Right. No, there is a spiritual battle going on. There are things that we need to be doing, not just for ourselves. The the idea that you just need to be worried about you getting yourself to heaven and getting home and not really worrying about anything else is such an individualistic mindset. When Joe just brought up something we brought up before, we got kids. You know, hopefully, Lord willing, going to have grandkids, and this is not something that we can just well, good luck. Hope that hope the world doesn't you know go up in flames type of thing, and so. Man, it's about it's high time we start taking this stuff seriously and also again passing it on, making sure that future generations are not the Overton window is not going to shift even more to where the next generation is a little bit more accepting than we were. And then the generation after that is a little bit more accepting than that generation was. And it just keeps moving down the line. Fight back against their narratives. That's all I'm saying. Fight it, back against the narrative. It's the power of just telling the truth. Just mm -hmm. tell the truth and and stop and studying worrying. and reading the scriptures. It's the same thing, you know. A parent knows if I, you know, say there's no ice cream for dinner, my kid might throw a temper tantrum, but I'm still going to say it. Well, somebody's got to be the grown up in the room, and it's going to have to be us saying this is the truth. Thus saith the Lord, whether you like it or not, whether you think I'm mean for saying it or not. And so, don't be like Andy Stanley. Don't be a compromiser, and don't repeat these ideas that Christians are hateful. It, it's just. You're not helping us when you're trying to appeal to the world and going, I'm one of the good ones. They don't think anybody's one of the good they ones. Don't, if you believe, they don't care. If you believe Jesus walked out of the grave. So I want to thank everyone who's watching. Uh, again, this is it's live Thursday night, 7 o'clock Central, 8 Eastern, whatever other time zone you're in. I'm not doing the math for everybody. Um, every week, Thursday nights, uh, talking about cultural things like this, uh, Think Fast Live. Uh, if you're watching right now, please click like the way the Facebook algorithm works. That helps a lot, helps other people see it, uh, helps get this out there. Uh, man, anytime you see a focus press post, just click like it helps us out. Even if you don't have takes, time to read the article. It takes approximately 1.2 seconds. Exactly. So uh, click that like. Be sure uh, to, to put it on your schedule Thursday nights. At, again, we're live at 7. Um, this video is on the page anytime afterwards. Go back and watch it if you don't get to catch it live. Uh, help us out with a share if you enjoyed it. You want to spread this message uh we've, we're doing a million things think deeper podcast you see the banner and wills uh thing the gym podcast lots going on so check us out at focus press and we'll talk to you guys next week